week for the footy club with this Pride game? Look, we're really excited to today be able to launch our diversity action plan and obviously to do it in the week of the first ever Pride game in Sydney for, for points. You know, we're, we're delighted the Pride game against St Kilda is a core pillar in, in our season and it, it really just sends a great message to so many of our fans that uh, everybody's welcome in the football. Do you think the St Kilda will actually agree with your idea of making that permanent fixture between the two teams at each season? I'm absolutely certain they do. No, they, they, look, they've they've been fantastic. They've been in pioneering the the, the Pride game, and uh, the, you know they've experienced the benefits. Their members and supporters have experienced the benefits. So I think we've, over many years, had a great rivalry with St Kilda, and uh, I think it will continue. And it, the Pride game will be synonymous with that. Do you think that being, sorry, that being not PC is, is basically is correct? Um, in that sense, are you hopeful that other clubs will will actually? have these similar kind of diversity action plans put in place. Obviously, Swans are leading the way in this. Are you hoping this, there'll be a ripple effect out into the amongst the other clubs? I think cer certainly, look, AFL is a very broad-based community um, enterprise and the support of diversity and, and, and by that having diversity action plans is incredibly important. So I think it's inevitable that, that, that others will follow it. And, and I think the, the key is it's not just to have a uh, plan such as diversity action plan, but it's really to to ensure that there are, there are definable actions and that we actually live by what we say. And the reason we have diversity action plans and the reason we have pride games is so that one day we don't need to have them. And that's really what it's all about. And I, I think that AFL as a competition understands that. Do you think the players uh, benefit about just not being coming here to play footy and just being a football club? Do you think they benefit um, from that grounding as well? I think so. Look, the, play, the players, are, they're elite athletes and they're you know, they experience so many benefits of, of being professional footballers and they, they genuinely understand that they are role models in society and they know that with that comes responsibility and that social responsibility, you know, whether it's indigenous issues or violence against women or LGBTIQ issues, you know, that they understand that they've got friends who are, are impacted by this and in a classic example obviously with the you know, Adam Goods issues you know, a couple of years ago. But they do understand it, they feel it, and, and the fact that they can use their, their God-given skills as great athletes to you know, hopefully improve society and, and make everyone feel welcome and just make society a better place is something that they really do embrace. Plenty happening at AFL House, House over the last week, Andrew. Some big decisions obviously to be made by Gillam and Ford. In terms of that footy boss role, someone with a Sydney background or a Sydney grounding, how much would that benefit? Um, the uh, clubs in non-footy states, do you think? Look, I think the, the great thing we're standing here, I'm looking at the Sydney Harbour Bridge, the fantastic thing about being in Sydney is we're not in Melbourne, <laughs> so I don't have to worry about it. So you don't have any opinion? I don't, really, I don't really have an opinion on that. I mean, I'm sure the AFL will, will you know, employ, whether it's internally, externally, the best person for the job, and if, if they're good at their job, you know, whether they're from Perth, Tasmania, Ukraine, I don't really care. What have you made of the Swans' stunning turnaround this season? Did the board ever feel a need to, I guess, get involved in the footy side of things? Did you ever feel a need to have a chat with John about it? Or? No, not really. I mean, the, the, the football, the, you know, the great thing about one of the reasons the, the Swans have been successful is we let people play their roles. And, you know, the, the board's role is the, is the governance of the club. And John Longmire and the coach's role is to, to coach the club. Um, so we, we don't walk around saying you've got our full support, all those sorts of things. Um, but we are supportive and you know, I, I had no doubt and the board had no doubt that we would turn it around. It's, it seemed difficult at the time but you know, really all credit goes to the players and the coaches. Has, has the scale of that surprised you at all though? Like just well I was disappointed Hawthorne beat us. <laughs> <laughs> um, look I think you know, when you lose the first six games of, this, of the season clearly it's never been done to make the finals so um, you know, it's obviously not it's, it's not something that's been done before, so it surprises you in the sense that, that it's the first time that um, potentially, you know, we're not there yet and we don't, we don't forget that, that we have to keep winning and there's no room for, there's no room for slip ups and, and we're very aware of that as a club. Um, but we have a proud tradition, uh, you know, over many years now of success in making the finals and, and if we don't make it, it's not going to be through the want of trying, we're going to try very, very hard. What does it say about the coach that you've, that you've got? Uh, look, John's a fantastic coach, and he's, you know, he's a fantastic teacher. And I know, you know, clearly, uh, anyone that's human, and, and many people think coaches aren't human, but I'm told they are. Uh, 
you know, if you lose six games in a row, the first six games of the season, it's very, very difficult. You know, the, the weight of the world is on your shoulders. Um, but he, he's an incredibly positive person, and I know that he, you know, his belief and certainly my belief has always been, if you keep doing the basics um, that we believe in and, and sticking to what we believe in, eventually success will come. And he, you know, he's he's clearly one of the elite coaches in the AFL. There's already talk of an all Sydney grand final now at this point in the season. If that did happen and if GWS got the hosting rights, where do you think is the best place to have it? ANZ obviously can hold a lot more people than spotless. I oh, probably the SCG would be my pick. Uh, I'm being serious. Uh, look, it's a long way to go. It's a long way to go. I, I, we're not even thinking about it. I mean, first first step for us is to make the finals, and then you know wherever we 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 play, we play. You know, that's we, we won't worry about it. We, we can't influence that.